So I want to talk about object-oriented programming. This video is a little bit to Darwin's hamster and anybody else that knows programming if you're a noob to programming and especially if you might be interested um, in, in learning object-oriented programming from Darwin's um, series then maybe you shouldn't watch this because or at least if you do don't carry anything any issues here back over over there um, I'm sorry Darwin I might have left some comments uh, that are exactly the kind you don't want to have so I just thought oh well I'll talk about it over here because I did get all all excited about the prospect of talking about some uh, the philosophy of software so object-oriented programming I mean I programmed professionally as an object-oriented programmer since about 1994 when I learned C++ for real but I was exposed to the idea back uh, I think I was playing around in 1986 or 7 um, when I was programming in C and I kinda got the gist that for practical purposes other than all the philosophy of the design associated with it that it had something to do with bundling the data structures uh, with functions in the following sense structured program had already become like a well-structured structured program often they would ha have as their first few arguments some set of um, some set of um, structures that uh, uh, this whole family of functions would share and the idea w was that instead of doing that why not in the structure have a function pointer that can act on the data that, that's of the structure. Now, I did this in C, and uh, it's it's entirely possible it was object oriented. I look back in retrospect, I was right, but of course the you know syntax is a little harsh, and you have to validate your own argument lists and stuff like this, um, you know, because you've got a a pointer to a function, or more likely in a you know flexible system you're going to have a pointer to a virtual table of function pointers and things like this so yike c++ does all of the similar stuff that i was doing with c pointers uh, but the, the compiler does it so that was the next thing i learned um, and i learned c still as a, a c++ still as a a better c like they say you know just literally you know you used to not have the one line common in c and all kinds of little things um, started uh, using the fact that classes and structures are the same thing to go ahead and use a constructor to um, zero out a structure um, when it was created things like that in code that still looked a lot like C I think this is a good way to learn it because I was never susceptible to any of the purism um, now I, I was in the game industry in 94 and it's very interesting to to really go object-oriented design at that point because um, it's very natural to think of the objects as, as things like you're, let's say you're making a chess game and you have uh, you know you, you have an object that is a piece and an object that is a board and what I've learned that is what you really need to model with your code objects is not the things that we think of as objects but the relationships more you know you'll end up having some sort of object that handles the kind of interaction that um, the board and piece have and then the board and piece are merely um, interfaces that insist that a particular, um, you know, um, a, a particular, you know, phenomena being modeled can can that there's a data structure that acts at one end as one end of a relationship. In other words, it's not important how you just model the piece in itself perfectly and the board in itself perfectly, but you're going to come up with this design of the piece and the board together. And what you're really going to model is their interactions, and w the code is really going to work on the relationship. And um, you know, it's just. Um, uh, the, the the object itself in that sense that the part that you will have that's like a chess piece that you can declare is really just like a contract that 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 entity has the properties necessary for it to play a role in the relationship being modeled and when you do this you start to get really really flexible there might be other things that move on the board besides pieces and and uh, all sorts of different ways you start to realize that something like a piece is going to be a system of um, objects you know that have their own quote unquote internal relationships and then you'll find you can build other objects more easily 
and um, there's really something fundamentally important to the fact that an object is an interface contract you can always break it down and still provide that contract and yet get more and more flexibility in, in how you provide it and how the class operates so yeah I find with a book like design patterns when I first read it it was like what the hell is all this, this is crazy and some of the things I was already doing but it was like this is a hard way to think about things but as I went through more and more I realized that what that book design patterns uh, taught me as a structured programmer was um, was that a lot of this stuff has to do with what kind of couplings you use that always has to do with the relationship and that basically you know with um, you know patterns like a frame wheel or something a flywheel you know you're, you're modeling how the system should implement something you're modeling uh, algorithmic abstractions you're not modeling actually things and of course this fits into my personal philosophy well because it's hard to get a handle on things and a lot easier to get a handle on a relationship it's hard to define philosophically what is a game board and what is a game piece you could do it well enough obviously for millions of games that have done just that but you could never really fundamentally answer that question when you make those approximations it's because you can fundamentally answer well for the game I'm making what how does the relationship have to work and that's what you really end up modeling so um, I guess the other uh, other things are um, how uh, you know I, I find it fascinating the difference of uh, like object-oriented programming in a language like Python or Ruby versus the object-oriented programming in C++ or or, or uh, Java just the kind of a, the statically linked mentality the advantages that it has uh, versus a, a more dynamic um, where you can have mix in classes and you can actually do some of the object oriented things that you know in C++ with the statically linked system you can't quite do. Um, I also think it's fascinating the, the point that uh, language like C++ or Python is, is really multi paradigmed and that you need that, that not everything should be object oriented. Um, there's, there's functional programming and other models of programming that interact really well with object-oriented systems but that if you look at it from an object-oriented purest way at the top it's, it's you know like the template library in C++ I mean there's a lot of object-oriented ideas but it, it obviously it's, it's not object-oriented if you have a set of functions that you use uh, at the top so um, yeah, if any programmers out there want to talk about some programming philosophy, let's get into it. I've integrated it all with my personal philosophy, so which I think is probably pretty unique. Um, okay, cheers.